Hello YouTube, my name is Isabella and today I'm going to be finally discussing the books that I read in November and some of the books that I would like to read within the last few weeks of the year. I've been a bad booktuber lately, a bad reader lately, and it's just, it's been a little sad, but I've been kind of feeling, I don't know, not iffy on the book community, but just, I don't know, I lacked motivation to do stuff, and then when I tried to film this wrap-up like twice, I hated the way it came out, but whatever it was I was feeling kind of snapped out of it. I'm now excited to be making videos again. I'm feeling the urge, the itch to do it, which I think is a good thing. So hopefully this won't take too long. I didn't read much in November and I don't really have strong opinions on a lot of the books I read. So yeah, let's just jump into it. The first two books I want to talk about that I read in November were The Magician's Nephew and The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. Now I kind of have a little bit of a weirdish backstory as to why I want to read these books. I discovered that actually the His Dark Materials trilogy by Philip Pullman was written kind of in response and to not echo the, the Chronicles of Narnia series but kind of be a little bit of a different ending for one of our characters in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And I thought that was really really interesting and I also really really want to read the His Dark Materials trilogy so I guess I decided you know what start from even further than the beginning because I don't have to read the Chronicles of Narnia but I decided to read the books in chronological order not publication order. I've actually read the first five before when I was a child. I don't know why I didn't finish the last two and I'm kind of irritated at like 10 year old Isabella but that being said I'm finally reading The Chronicles of Narnia, which is great, and I was kind of left a little bit wanting. Chronicles of Narnia is very, very popular children's classics, and I went into it remembering bits and pieces of each of the books, but not really remembering, like, how it happens. And so the first book, The Magician's Nephew, it all kind of came rushing back to me after listening to the first little bit of the audiobook. I remember being that little hipster nerd being um the magician's nephew is better than the lion the witch and the wardrobe. I I was that kid but I don't necessarily agree now however I really liked liked it for how it builds the world. It's literally a creation story. It's very foundational and it's hard to judge it just on that one piece. I ended up giving it three out of five stars. It was okay. It was good. It was very foundational and I've said that word 50 million times but that's what it did. It gave me a basis for the rest of the series which I do always appreciate. And so the second book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, is obviously the most popular one. There was the movie and I didn't remember a lot from the book. I have vivid memories of the movie but not so much the book. And I did really, really enjoy rereading The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. It's much more of an adventure story and you get a little bit more from the characters. At first, all the biblical references and stuff made me a little bit nervous because C.S. Lewis was actually a Christian apologist in his day, which meant that he spent a good chunk of time like defending the Crusades and the church's actions and that made me nervous. But the biblical stuff isn't like crazy preachy and it's very much a story of good versus evil and forgiveness. Tales of forgiveness is, are always a good thing and it's I think a good thing to remind people about forgiveness and yeah that one I found to be very enjoyable and I ended up giving it four out of five stars. So the next book I read was also a middle grade children's book and it was Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. This book I was initially intrigued by because essentially seven or eight different publishers wanted to like publish the book and it was kind of a toss up as to who would do it. So like if eight different publishing houses wanted to read it, I figured it should be pretty good. And its elevator pitch was Harry Potter meets Percy Jackson, which I think is actually like super generic and it 
doesn't do so much for the story. This story essentially follows a young girl named Morgan Crow who is cursed. She was born on a like a bad day and so she's been cursed her whole life and everything that goes wrong in her town the town blames her. On her 11th birthday she's actually destined to die but instead of dying she gets whisked away by a kind of mysterious magical man to a new place nevermore and our story takes off from there. It's a really fun whimsical magical story and it's exactly what I want middle grade books to be. I thought Morgan was a great main character. She was snarky and just so very smart and she is very much an outsider and an outcast and I think a lot of young children could find a lot of comfort in her. Everyone, especially when you're young, feels alone and kind of on their own so I think a lot of young children could get a lot out of Morgan and she could be another friend to them like like a Harry Potter or Percy Jackson. She could she could become one of those characters that everyone kind of sees themselves in. There's like weird little instances that made me think exactly of Harry Potter and I wished it would have been a little bit more original but I ended up giving it four out of five stars. I thought it was very magical. And the final book I read in November was basically the only reason why November wasn't a complete bust of a reading month because I believe I've read my favorite book of the year and I'm kind of kicking myself for not have picking it up sooner and I finally read Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor which is like that in itself me just saying I read Strange the Dreamer I deserve a party I've wanted to read it since like late 2016 when it was supposed to come out and then it got pushed back and then I had it in my possession for six months and I didn't do anything with it. I read Strange the Dreamer and it is my favorite book of the year so far and there's like three weeks left of December so I'm pretty sure that this is going to be my favorite book of the year. In this video I'm not going to tell you what this book is about. I'm not going to tell you really about the characters because Lainey Taylor is a master at her craft. She writes beautiful, beautiful worlds and amazing characters, and I think that you should just jump into it. Take the leap of faith, take the plunge, and read this book. It is just so fantastic. If you like high fantasy, you will like this book. I do plan to do like a spoiler-filled gush on this, hopefully soon. I'm not entirely sure when because I have to like write down a lot more of my thoughts and notes and I've never done a spoilery-ish book talk before but I do want to discuss this at length in depth and it was just so beautifully done. Also Lainey Taylor, this is a weird compliment to give her but she's a master at writing pain and creating painful situations and really she's really good at writing human complexities so hopefully that was quick enough and I'm going to just kind of breeze through a few of the books that I would like to finish before the year is over. The first book I know I'm gonna get through is Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, The Sword of Summer by Rick Riordan. As you can see the dust jacket is off, therefore I'm actually reading it. I have like maybe 60 pages left. Again, I deserve just like a good old cheer for finally picking this book up because I've been meaning to read it for so long. Another book I'd like to read and one the, the one I will be picking up next is The Language of Thorns by Leigh Bardugo. This again is one of my most anticipated books of 2017 and I'm not gonna sit on a Leigh Bardugo book ever again. I love her books. From what I know it's just fairy tales from the Grishaverse and I don't need anything else. I'm sold. I'd also like to read The Rose and the Dagger by Renee Audier. This is the sequel to The Wrath and the Dawn. I read The Wrath and the Dawn in the summer and I really liked it, but some of the details are starting to fade. Another book I would like to finish is Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk. I was reading this when I, on my breaks at work and I'm like almost halfway through it and it's been, it's been a very, very surprising book and I'm very much enjoying it. This is a book about an 80 something year old woman walking through New York on New Year's Eve reflecting upon her life and it doesn't sound interesting but it's really beautifully written. Another set of books I would like to get to are The Sex Criminals by Matt Fraction and Chip Zdarsky. 
I grabbed these from the library one day when I was super bored waiting to pick up my brother from school. And the series is about a couple and when they have sex, time actually freezes, so they decide to rob bank banks. Blah blah blah. Words. Sounds kind kind of weird and quirky and yeah, I thought maybe I'd give it a try. Also, these are very adult, obviously, so if that's something you don't like, I would suggest you stay away from them. I'd also like to read A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. This is a classic story. We all know the story, but I've never read this book, nor have I read anything by Charles Dickens, so I figured why not read, like, the children's book of his first? So those are the books I read in November, and some of the books I would like to get to this month. It's a little ambitious, but I'm feeling really motivated to read, so yeah, I'm excited. I'd like to know what your reading plans are for December. Are you, like, behind on your reading goal and you're trying to catch up like me? Or are you, like, super great and super ahead of the curve and you don't have anything to worry about? I'd love to know. I feel like in this video I spoke really quickly, but that's what happens when I'm excited. I'm amped up, ready to go, and I'm speaking very quickly, but thank you so much for watching. I will see you again very soon because I'm excited to make videos again. Bye!